Ladies and gentlemen, this is a secondary video to the video I did about the RAS system. So if you've not taken chance to watch that video, kindly go back and watch that video and we'll put a link down below so that you can actually uh, go to watch that video because that is the basis of this. This is a video that is supposed to educate you about the mode of action of those drugs that are used to manage hypertension. Okay, so how do they work? Where do they work? And I told you in the previous video that most of those drugs, actually three groups in the drugs for hypertension, they come and work or block this system called the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system, the RAS system. Now understand, for those of you who did not, uh, who would actually uh, want me to give them a recap, the RAS system is a system that is supposed to bring up blood pressure when it's going down. So the end result of this RAS system is hyper or high blood pressure. So it actually brings back the blood pressure up from down. Okay. So the end result of this process in the body is to actually raise the blood pressure. Now, we have two organs that are involved, actually three organs. One is the liver, two is the kidneys, and three is the lungs. When blood pressure is going down, let's say you have, you've worked, uh, you've done an excess workout, you've sweat, or you have bled during an accident and your blood volume is going down, the blood pressure is going down, the kidneys will sense that. Once they sense that, they will produce a hormone or an enzyme called renin. And the reason why they are producing renin is because renin is the activator of a protein that is coming from the liver that is called angiotensinogen. So the liver produces angiotensinogen, the kidneys will produce renin, and then this renin will act upon angiotensinogen that is circulating in the blood already because the liver produces it and releases it in blood. So it will act on angiotensinogen to make it active. This is an inactive protein. So it clips it, makes it active, that is angiotensin 1, but this angiotensin 1 has to be made more active. And since angiotensin 1 is circulating in blood, it goes to the lungs and encounters an enzyme called angiotensin converting enzyme, SCE. That angiotensin converting enzyme breaks down angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2, which is the one that is responsible for an increase in blood pressure through two ways. One, it causes constriction of blood vessels so that the blood pressure goes up. And number two, it causes the kidneys to release a, a hormone that is called aldosterone that will cause absorption of sodium and retention of water so that the volume of blood goes up and the blood pressure goes up. So that is the end result of this. And when the blood pressure now goes up to a certain level, the kidneys will sense an increase in blood pressure and shut down this system so that you don't go into excess high blood pressure, okay, which will cause rupturing of your blood vessels and problems, possibly a brain and strokes and heart attacks and even kidney failure. So this is how it regulates itself. Now drugs for hypertension, drugs that manage hypertension because they don't treat drugs that manage hypertension they come and block this system so that the end result is not increasing blood pressure but dropping blood pressure because we have already activated this system and the blood pressure is already up so we need to bring it down so the basics are block this system so that the blood pressure goes down and there are multiple i think there are eight to ten drugs uh, drug classes of uh, hypertension medication and i'll talk about about eight of this uh, platform so that you can actually understand because that those eight classes are the ones that harbor uh, a larger amount or a larger number of these medications. Now, I'll not mention the brand names that you people mostly know, but if I get a chance, I'll mention one of it so that you can actually understand as I go ahead. But I'll mention the generic names. And I taught you how to identify generic names on a, on a pack. So if you have a pack for drugs, do not go for the bigger name that has an R, the trademark on it, because that is an industry name. That is a trade name. Go for the one that follows that, the one that is actually below, a small, the, the, written in small fonts. Uh, for example, a, a drug like uh, nifedipine, most of you know it as Adalat. Adalat is a brand name. Nifedipine is the generic name. So I'll be mentioning the generic names because I don't want to get in trouble with the, the manufacturers of these uh, medications. Now, look at it this way. So, for us to activate angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1 and then angiotensin 2 and then raise blood pressure. We are already at high blood pressure. We need to bring it down. So what do we do? We have to get a drug that blocks this process here. It has to block renin. So there's a medication that blocks renin. So that's number one medication, renin blockers. And I've put it here. 
So the first drug is renin blockers. And what do they do? They actually block renin from converting angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Now, those drugs that block this process, the first step here, are called renin inhibitors or renin blockers. And there's just one drug in that group that is called alcicaren. Okay, so that's the first uh, medication group. Number two, in case we already passed or surpassed this stage, so we can actually block the second stage, which basically means we have already formed angiotensin 1, and there's an enzyme that has to convert angiotensin 1 into, into angiotensin 2. That enzyme is angiotensin converting enzyme. Therefore, we must find a drug that blocks this enzyme. Okay, and those drugs that block that enzyme are called angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. So they inhibit angiotensin converting enzyme. This is a converter enzyme, converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Therefore, we want to block this second step. Therefore, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, they block that step because they block that enzyme. What are these drugs? Most of you have these drugs on your prescription. They, they, they most of them end with RIL, real. So, captopril, enalapril, and enalapril is one of the one uh, the most uh, used one, which is actually uh, sometimes it's called CADES or something. So, enalapril, captopril, perindopril, fosinopril, and lisinopril. So when you read on your package and you see drugs ending with the word pril, 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 those are actually coming in under the SE inhibitors. Now, these drugs are very known to cause a lot of cough. Of course, some of them can be used as first-line therapy in uh, hypertension, but they are known to cause a very dry cough and a severe cough. So therefore, for us to actually do away with that cough, we have to change the medication because some of them come with very severe cough that is very annoying. So therefore, you need to ease up their cough by introducing them to a new drug. So instead of the SE inhibitors, you simply move to the next class of drugs that are blocking this angiotensin 2, which is active and is going to cause an increase in blood pressure. So we must block this, uh, this, 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 uh, this protein. So drugs that block this protein from binding to receptors, because this protein has to come to the blood vessel to bind to receptors on the blood vessel and cause constriction, increasing blood pressure. So if you block the receptors that this protein binds to, that means blood pressure will go down. So those drugs that actually block this are called angiotensin receptor blockers. So they block the receptors that angiotensin binds to to actually cause vasoconstriction. So once you block that receptor, you will cause vasodilation. Once you cause vasodilation, blood pressure goes down. Now these are drugs that are known, famously known as satans. We talked about them on Alive. Satans, okay? <laughs> From the word satan. So these satans... They end with the word Satan. For example, Losatan. Most of you are on a combination called Losatan H. So Losatan is a Satan. We also have Valsatan. We have Irbesatan and Candesatan. All of them have different names in terms of brand names, but these are the generic names. So you can combine these with other uh, drugs to actually uh, have adequate or optimum therapy. So these ones, they block angiotensin uh, 2 from binding to the blood vessel receptors to cause constriction. They also block it from binding to the adrenal gland to activate it to produce aldosterone. So when you block the, the binding to the adrenal gland and activating it to produce aldosterone, you will not have water retention. You will have water being released from the system. Blood volume falls, blood pressure falls. Now, if you have surpassed all these stages and you've come to a place where you already produced aldosterone from the uh, kidneys or from the adrenal glands, there is a drug that can actually block this aldosterone from binding to its receptors. They are called either aldosterone blockers, aldosterone receptor blockers, or aldosterone antagonists. Antagonists, they do the opposite of what aldosterone does. So they block the receptor so that aldosterone does not bind on the receptor, or if it binds, if they, they actually block the receptor so that aldosterone does not bind on it. That's the, that's the mode of action, okay? And these ones are very, very, very uh, well known. Uh, so I think there's a drug that is called aldactone. You guys know it? Um, and it's actually the one that causes you to release a lot of water from the kidneys, urinate. It's also a diuretic. And you realize on the number of drugs, on the classes of drugs, you have also diuretics. So this one falls under the classes of diuretics. But you see the mode of action is it blocks uh, aldosterone from binding from, from the receptors. So now, spironolactone is called spironolactone. So the one that you know, aldactone, that's a trade name. The generic name is spironolactone. And then you have eplerinone. So these two, they block aldosterone from binding to its receptors. Now, on the blood vessel where angiotensin can actually bind on, we have drugs, a group of drugs that are called vasodilators. So vasodilators simply, they dilate the blood vessel and they lower the blood pressure. And a good example here is hydralazine. 
a lot of pregnant women and a lot of people who have high blood pressure injected with the hydralazine to lower it uh, and start managing it. And then we have nitroglycerin for people who have uh, the angina, people who have that uh, uh, the pain in their chests. They are given this drug to actually lower the blood pressure. Also, we have another drug called minoxidil. Minoxidil is a drug that is was intended to lower blood pressure, but the side effect of this drug is hair growth all over. So it can cause you hair growth. And no wonder there are people who have a bald head and they apply minoxidil on the bald head to grow hair only to find out that when you apply it on the bald head, the hair grows somewhere else. So, so this one is a crazy one, okay? So do not abuse its side effect, which is hirsutism, to basically grow hair when you have a bald head, okay? So those are the three group the drugs in that category of vasodilators. Let us go back here and see. So we have... We have the renin receptor blockers, the first stage. We have angiotensin, uh, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. They block the enzyme angiotensin. And then we have angiotens uh, angiotensin converting enzyme. Then we have the satans, which block the uh, attachment of this angiotensin to, to its receptors, which are the satans. And then we have now another group of drugs that does not act on this one. It's called the beta blockers. Beta blockers... They simply act on the heart and sometimes they, if they are not selective like beta 2, uh, if you call them uh, non-selective, we mean they block both beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. So beta 1 are in the heart and beta 2 receptors are in the lungs. So when they are non-selective, these drugs can be very dangerous because they can actually go and block the dilation or the uh, dilation of the bronchioles, which will cause you problems in breathing. So yes, they'll help you in lowering the blood pressure, but they can bring you problems in, uh, in breathing. So people who have asthma should take a lot of cautions in this one. But the beta-1 selective drugs are the ones that act on the heart to reduce uh, the heart rate and also help you uh, uh, dilate the blood vessels. We have atenolol. These ones actually end with the word lol. Lol, lol, lol. Atenolol. Timolol. Timolol is a very good one in terms of uh, releasing intraocular pressure in the eye. So atenolol, timolol, propranolol. And oh, most of you have used this, specifically ladies. Propranolol, you've used it when you have anxiety. You want to go and, uh, and, and, and make a speech in front of people and you have anxiety and palpitations. You're given propranolol to actually ease the tension. Also, propranolol can be used in management of the thyroid problems. So, propranolol is part of that and then bisoprolol is part of that. So, the lols come under beta blockers. And then another, another group or class is the diuretics. And I told you, aldactin, which is spironolactone, is part of the diuretics. Here we have drugs like, uh, most of you call it Lasix, furosemide, which basically increase uh, the release of water from the kidneys. So you urinate a lot when you've taken this medication. Okay, so they release the fluid, therefore they help you recover from a heart problem, uh, they help you recover from a kidney problem and also hypertension. Also the one that you people know a lot that is called HCTZ, hydroclothiazide. And HCTZ is the one that is combined with possibly losartan, so that you can actually get losartan H. So losartan for the satan, then H for HCTZ, the diuretic, okay? And then there's another group which is a first line. And I've noticed there are a lot of people who end up having a swollen tongue or uh, ankle swelling when they, in, they start an initial therapy of these drugs. These drugs, the amlodipine and nifedipine, they come under the calcium channel blockers. Now listen to this. Calcium channel blockers, it means they block calcium from going into the cells. Because when calcium goes into the cells that line the blood vessel, that blood vessel will constrict and blood pressure will go up. So they come in to block calcium from going into the smooth muscles uh, cells on the blood vessel wall. Now, I always tell you, instead of this group of drugs, why don't you consider magnesium supplements? Or why don't you consider just consuming diets that are rich in magnesium? Because magnesium can come and replace calcium. When magnesium gets into the cell, calcium leaves. So that makes it uh, easy for your blood, uh, blood vessel to dilate and blood pressure falls. So magnesium carbs, uh, supplements actually act against these ones, okay? So nifedipine, amlodipine, and the ones that end with pins, 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 they come here under the calcium channel blockers. Now, for people who consume uh, uh, calcium supplements, this is the danger here. Pregnant women who consume calcium supplements a lot, older people who consume calcium uh, supplements a lot, this is the problem. Calcium will be overloaded in the bloodstream, it will go into the blood vessels, cause constriction or contraction of the blood, uh, smooth muscles of the blood vessel, and it will cause you increase in blood pressure. So it's it's unfair to give older people who have hypertension calcium, uh, calcium uh, uh, supplements for the bones, because calcium supplements will cause an increase in blood pressure, and then now we'll have to give you a calcium channel blocker to actually undo what we've just caused. Pregnant women who don't have hypertension, they're given calcium supplements for the bones and all that, 
But you see, that's a problem. You might end up having hypertension, and now you have to end up. Uh, you have to go ahead and initiate uh, antihypertensive therapy. So these are the classification of these drugs. Okay. So we have the vasodilators. We have uh, the uh, the aldosterone uh, receptor blockers, which is under also uh, the diuretics. We have the calcium channel blockers. We have the beta blockers. We have the angiotensin receptor blockers, the satans. We have the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. We have the renin inhibitors. So under renin inhibitors are sicarin. Under SE inhibitors, we have the prils. Under the satans, we have the satans, of course, low satan, val satan, and all that. Under the beta blockers, we have the lols. Under the diuretics, they release water from the system, furosemide, which is lasix, HCTZ, which is hydrochlorothiazide, and also aldosterone, okay? Uh, aldosterone uh, receptor blockers, which is uh, the, uh, the, the uh, aldactone, aka spirinolactone. We have the calcium channel blockers, nifedipine, you know it as adalax, or amlodipine. We have uh, the vasodilators, the minoxidil, nitroglycerin, and hydro hydralazine. So all these are drugs acting on this system to actually help you uh, relieve blood pressure. They act on the system also the RAS and also other systems. But look at it this way. There is one medication that is used in pregnant women that is called methyl dopa. So it's used in preeclampsia and all that. Blood pressure in pregnancy is called methyl dopa because it's safe in pregnancy. This one does not act on this. No, what it does is it's a centrally acting. So it blocks the receptors. Actually, it actually blocks the channels or the signals that will cause vasoconstriction and an increased heart rate in the brain. So once it acts centrally, because centrally is in the brain and the spinal cord, therefore the peripheral will simply re respond to the central. So now when it blocks the, uh, the signals that cause an increase in heart rate and vasoconstriction, that means we'll have vasodilation and a reduced heart rate. And now this is how pregnant women survive uh, hypertension in pregnancy. But I've always insisted that this is supposed to be temporary as you fix the kitchen because hypertension is actually a kitchen problem and it's a silent killer. Most people are just collapsing because I know most of you are constantly taking paracetamol, the maramojas, uh, the, 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 the Ad Panadol Advance. You take it every single time. And as you take that because you have a headache every evening, you are ignoring the fact that your kitchen is a mess. So as you're doing that, you're actually masking hypertension you're masking the side effects of hypertension so please be taking your blood pressure test to see how far you are the measurements monitor your system and please change the kitchen because the kitchen is a solution to all this okay so once your kitchen is in order you have dropped the seed oils you have dropped the, uh, the most of the carbohydrates that are processed and simple carbohydrates you've dropped the sugars in all forms this will not ensue therefore you will not have to take the burden of the economical burden of actually buying the medication and you know these medications are very are very expensive okay and they are coming in with new combinations of this medication every other time but you ask yourself we have combinations of drugs for every step in this process but hypertension cases are still going up people are still having hypertension people who are on this medication are still hypertensive why is that so why do we just change drugs change combinations add more drugs Yet we can simply change what these people are eating. So is it easier for you to change what these people are eating or is it easier for you to add on the dosage or a combination of drugs for hypertension? Is it easier for them? Actually, I think it's easier for you to change your kitchen and then avoid all these processes. A lot of money that's going here can actually go into your kitchen and you become a better person because again, we are looking at it in terms of longevity. We reverse hypertension and then we maintain a healthy life that is less of medical conditions. So I thought you should know these are the mode of action of these medications and I hope you've learned something new from this.